come and discover the warmth and hospitality of Morris, home of the thrilling Manitoba Stampede. Nestled as the central hub on Highway 75, Morris is more than a town. It's a thriving nexus of business and community with new industrial opportunities ready to break ground. Join us and make Morris your next investment. A co-op is not a building. It's not a gas bar, a home center, or a food store. A co-op is a group of people working together to help each other. To feed, to fuel, to build community. This is where we work. This is where we live. This is who we are. We are early risers. We are trusted neighbors. We are committed to serving you. We are co-op. Paul Brandt Trucking, a chance meeting years ago that turned into an incredible friendship. Turns out we have the same name. Now that's something that doesn't happen every day. But as I've had the opportunity to work with this exceptional award-winning company, I've come to understand that there is something that happens every day with Morris Manitoba's Paul Brandt Trucking. They deliver quality. Paul Brandt Trucking has helped me to do business better. My trucking company of choice since they first appeared in the Convoy video, their world-class fleet and personnel literally keep the show on the road delivering our gear and stage production each and every night. Congratulations, Paul Brandt Trucking, on 50 years of traditional values, modern methods, and for service with excellence on every single run. We'll catch you on the flip-flop. Bye-bye. Saving for your child's education doesn't need to be stressful. Access offers a wide range of investment options to help you and your family's future, like a registered education savings plan. With the flexibility to deposit any time throughout the year, you decide when and how much to contribute, making it easy to save for your child's education. Contact us today to start your savings plan so you can spend more time celebrating your child's future. Access Credit Union, where you need us to be. Welcome back, hockey fans, to game number five here of the MMJHL Finals in between the Pembina Valley Twisters and the St. James Junior Canucks. And what was the good one that they had that they just finished 21 hours ago here in Moore, in, out of Morris, which was a 4-3 Junior Canucks win with Matthew Mason Vandell helping his squad through and through with that, having two assists and then getting the overtime winner midway through the second overtime. And with that, I'm here, your host, Belly Brown Long, with my partner, The G Show, and my cameraman, Josh Tech, bringing you tonight's MMJHL Hockey as the Twisters try and stretch the season out and bring it back south to Morris, while the Canucks have a chance to win out here and be victorious at home ice for their first time in the St. James Civic Center since the turn of the millennium. And with that... I'll head it over to my partner, the G Show, and we'll be with you. And puck drops coming here shortly. Yeah, Bentley, thanks for having me. I'm super excited to, to be here to, you know, not do play-by-play, -play, but color commentate with you tonight. It should be another fantastic game. Uh, both of these teams have only been separated by a goal in the wins and the losses. We've seen two back-to-back overtime games with of course last night's going to double OT and uh, you know I think both these teams for the most part they've shown their really good defensive structure they've shown the ability to finish but there's been points where you've seen these teams also take advantage of the missteps from these teams uh, most notably for the St. James Junior Canucks a really hard four check yesterday leading to uh, I think it was that third goal of the game for themselves or maybe that second goal of the game a bit of havoc created in front of the net where the twisters we usually see them clearing the rebounds but haven't had as much success with that with how St. James have overloaded them at points in this series and then for the same chains Junior Canucks I mean they're undefeated in closeout games to closeout series in these past two seasons being the defending champs but that Pemina Valley forecheck was really strong yesterday and uh, caused their defensemen some fits with the pucks like we've seen all series long so whatever team can manage the puck better tonight gives themselves the best chance to win and uh, Bentley the team that scored first
as the Canucks skate out onto the ice, followed by the Twisters. Look at the keys to success in this one for both teams. And meanwhile, for the Twisters, they've had tough going in the last four, last three games of the series, uh, getting out scoring early, and that's what they need to do. That's what they came in, did here in game one, and got out to an early lead. And with that, you hope that one of their veterans will step up and help that come to fruition for them and give them some life early on and help calm some nerves and get really the momentum going on their side. Meanwhile, for the Canucks, continuing to play their style of hockey and use their speed that they have used to beat the Twisters time and time again in this series. And with that being their key asset, we'll see how both these teams implement their game plans tonight as we'll head to Canada. as both these teams get ready here for a puck drop. We talked about here early on, before the series starts, the G-Show had an interview with Blair Mooney, the head coach of the Canucks, and as he talked about just sticking to your hockey here and not getting away from it, and if you do, you're going to have some bad bounces go against you, and that has led basically uh, led to how this series has been with all of them being one goal differences in all the games, and again, just a couple bounces like Gertzen as he's out there in the starting lineup getting the nice bounce here at the end of the second period to get the winning goal in game one. And you saw that again with Matthew Mason Vandell doing the same last night in overtime as Hepner works it ahead to Gertzen. All the way down the ice, Anderson scoops it up where the Canucks picked off by DeGrave. DeGrave trying to center that off a couple sticks and the Canucks now work it out of the zone. Twister's able to hold at the blue line and they'll turn that one over to the guys in blue and white as the Canucks will clear it in. Ends getting the start. Back in net for the Pemmon Valley Twisters off the stick of Weeb. Bouncing puck to Grave, gets it out of the zone. And Gertzen can't calm that puck down. Phillips, he'll pass it across. And Anderson, he'll work it into ahead. Comes right in on Ends, and Ends holds on for a whistle with Price coming in after him. And again, going on with that, talking about those bounces. We also saw that here in game number three with Kale Price getting a lucky bounce off the stick of DeGrave to end it. Also in overtime. So it's been that very close net series here in the finals. As Xander Carroll rolls in on the draw to take on Griffin Hot. He'll beat him on that one. Pouette, he'll work it out of the zone and all the way down. Neal scoops it up for the Canucks. Long stretch pass. Off a couple sticks and Carroll plays it in. Canucks controlling in deep as Aiden Bruce. And Younger trying to get it out of his own zone. He'll work with it. Pressured by Carls. Puck comes around behind the net. Neil will scoop it up and play that up. Holding at the line, though, is the Twisters captain. And he'll work it along to Weeb. Weeb looking in. He couldn't get a shot away as the Canucks tie up the shooting lanes. 
Early pressure here from the Twisters in the attack zone. And Neal now behind the safety of his own goal. He will wait. And now Neil, he'll pass it ahead forward before picking that up off the boards and turning that over to Wood. Wood pressured by Hyatt. And that puck comes all the way down the ice. Neil giving chase, pressured by Jolliker. And Jolliker lays a nice hit on Neil down low. Getting some momentum coming here from the Twisters fans who made the travel out. Again, a good showing here by fans from both sides as these teams have traveled well through this series as Price walks the line and plays it in. Ends. He'll play it around behind the net. And the Twisters are going to ice that. And both of these teams looking to establish an attack early on uh, for the Pemina Valley Twisters. You know, not the heaviest forecheck we've seen so far, but letting the St. James defensemen know they're there. And for St. James, having trouble so far trying to break in off of that in transition. Pemina Valley doing a great job holding out the blue line so far. Off the drop, Price and crew controlling the puck. Wiley a shot from the point, and Anz holds on through the traffic in front. And here we have a look at the replay there as the shot from Whiteley and N sees it the whole way through traffic. Shots 2-0 in favor of the Junior Canucks. As Price and Bergman in the dot, Frozen Biscuits dropped and Twisters won that one, but it's controlled by the Canucks. Shot through traffic and N holds on for a whistle on the challenging shot from Brady Whiteley at the point. Canucks changing up their D-man as Neil will roll on with Aiden Bruce off the draw. Kicked by Price into the corner, and that's going to get picked up by the Twisters. Twisters clearing the zone for a bit as Price picks it up and plays it right ahead. And into the zone. Hepner behind his net. He'll work ahead for it to Cohen Thomas. He can't get a stick on it. Neil will send it right back in. Dick trying to scoop that one up. He always gets it towards and centers that. And we got the neck popped up the once possibly. I don't know exactly. Did just enough. And that'll bring a stoppage in play. Twister's changing it up a little bit. Cody Clark, the senior, he is out in this one. Interrupt play sim. They got Ron Orchard out there. As DeGrave gets set against Thorson here on the redo on the draw, 17.04 on the clock. Shots are 3-0 in favor of the home squad as the Canucks win the draw. Back to the point, shot through traffic, loose puck, and Anz will scoop that up and hold on for a whistle. Yeah, and Logan ends getting the start in this game after Owen LaRock got it last night. He's uh, been pretty busy early on, five shots against, but for the most part, he's been able to see the shots. His team doing a good job of uh, not allowing screens in front. Off the draw, here comes Gertzen with it, and he can't hold on to it. That rolls right off his stick. Whiteley, he'll play it across, and picked off by DeGrave. DeGrave working down low. Twister's points leader through the postseason. Carls plays it in down low for Weeb. Weeb getting pinned by a couple of players. And that comes out to Gertzen, back to Weeb. Weeb can't cleanly play it, and he'll just work it back to the point. Jacob Carls plays it down low off the stick of Gertson. And Whiteley's able to clear the zone. Romnock's got to go, and here comes Romnock with a chance. He fires that in and scores. And the Canucks strike first here. And the neck came off there. I, don't th I think it was in already here. We'll look at the replay. And make sure that clearly crossed the line. It's tough to tell the net did pop in after the net after the fact. As ends talking over with the official. And he's arguing his case that the net was off the moorings, and that's why that snuck in. Another OS, the Canucks strike first. As they go to sort that net out. It's gonna be Ashton Romanock with the goal. And the assist going to the 26 of Brady Whiteley.
as they're still looking at that Twisters net there. You know, it's been issues here in the last couple of games, the net on that far side. and Referee trying to skate away there with Logan ends his water bottle. He'll stop him in his tracks and scoop that back. Keeping his possessions as we're back here at the center ice draw. Canucks controlling, leading this one 1-0 one early on. Off a couple sticks and played ahead by Dick. He'll work it across. And Price, he'll work it ahead into the zone by William. And ends will freeze. And I mean, that goal from Logan ends just one he wants to have back, right? Even if the net was off or not. I mean, only he, he truly knows on that play. But Pemina Valley had a good cycle going. It looked like their D uh, chip past them. And it's just that St. James speed that we talked about off air, Bentley, that uh, ends up being able for Romanuk to get to the puck first. Canucks striking first, up big on the shot board, seven to nothing. As a little bit of a difference in events from what we had the other night, as Phillips works it in, and he'll get it right back from William. Puck behind the net, Kale Price working with it. Pressure by the two, Xander Carls. And Jonathan Dick working at it, and the net again popped off on that same side. That Romanuk scored, bringing again a stoppage here in play. And another thing that we'll see how that will turn up to be a big thing here in Game 5 is the fatigue from Game 4. Again, these players were on the ice 21 hours ago in double overtime, and it was the Canucks, of course, for Mason, Matthew Mason Vandell having quite the night, getting the first star. As we mentioned, he had the overtime winner and he had two helpers to go along with that for his team in the 4-3 win. Up the draw, Carl's behind his net, working at it and he'll clear it all the way down. And the Twisters just play it in. Loose puck picked up by Alex Van Dyne. He fires that in on net just wide and sprawling around with the puck in front. Here's the keeper for the Canucks. Canucks going the other way. They'll clear that in off a couple sticks. And that puck will come up and out of play, bringing us a stoppage in play here with just over five minutes into the frame. Twisters finally register their first shot on net. Yeah, and uh, really interesting to see. Uh, for most of this series, we've seen Willen with Griffin Height playing. Blair Mooney making the switch, putting Kale Price uh, along with their top end goal scorer in Tyrone uh, Willen. But right there, as we saw, the Twisters with a few chances. St. James doing a really good job of getting back to their house and covering up in front of their net to, to get some blocks, some shin pads into the shot. Off the draw, Twisters controlling in the defensive zone. They're going to turn that over at the blue line to Cole Younger and gloved down by Wood. Wood trying to get it out of the zone. And a quick play there by Osterman to keep it in the zone for the Canucks. Twisters now are able to get it out and sent right back in by the Canucks where Kyle Van Dines will work it across to Wood. Brock Wood sending it up the near side off the stick of Lucas Jolker and into the zone. Van Dines working with Neal. He bumps Neal off the puck. Great forecheck by the Twisters as Van Dyne sends it towards the net just wide. Wood comes in to scoop it up. Still working with it. Bouncing puck, Wood gloves that one down. Twisters hold at the line. They'll work that around just wide of the net. Behind the net, skirmish for the puck continuing. And the Canucks prevailing on the near side. They'll send that all the way down and they'll have enough for an icing as Osterman ices it and a little bit of Altercation there with Sutherland as he leaves the ice. Sutherland having quite the night for the Twisters, keeping it in there. His team in that game in game four, he had two goals for himself in that one. Yeah, and we're starting to see this Twisters four check get going, them getting it down low on the cycle. And uh, this St. James team is so good as a unit defensively, but if there's one weakness, it would be when their D get pressured, as we've seen this series, Bentley, they've uh, been coughing it up. Twisters jamming in front of the back end and holding on is Noah Gilbert. Has a couple of opportunities there for the Twisters. Shots are 7 to 2. We got 13.47 to go in the opening frame. Canucks leading by one thanks to the stick of Ashton Romanuk and the assist 
on that one going to Brady Whiteley. The grave in on the draw. And that's one by the Canucks in the defensive zone. Worked across to Ironson and Ironson to Chase Sobey. They'll work it just past the grave and out of the zone. The grave scooping it back up. Picked up by Romanuk. Romanuk sends it in to the zone, giving Chase to Sobey. Dick though scoops the puck up. And he'll work it the other way. Twisters though mismanage that puck. That's going to be picked up by Sobey. He tries to stare that into the slot. And luckily for the Twisters, Dick was there and he was able to work it ahead ice. And the Twisters will send that one in. And try and get some offensive pressure going as they had early on. Haven't got much shots. As Dick behind his net works it to DeGrave. DeGrave pushes the head forward off the stick of Whiteley. And Russell, good to see him back in the lineup after missing some games. Gertzen plays it across. And DeGrave sends it in. All the way around behind the net, Whiteley picks it up. And he had Weeb chasing him down, still stays with it. And is able to clear it out of the zone, where Russell fires it right back in after taking a little bit of a bump from Mason Bandell. Canucks working with it behind their net, pressure by Brett Bergman. And Bergman forcing them out here on the forehand side. And the Canucks just to deflect that into the zone all the way down. No icing as Kill Price rushes in front, and the net comes off again with arguing it is Romanok and he's a little bit of a well that's St. James speed right what an effort by Kale Price to get to that puck first quick pass out in front and uh, an opportunity that St. James can capitalize on and yeah they got to look into what's happening to that netting down there Bentley it's been about the third time it's come off the Barons already tonight well, it's been a reoccurring issue here at this arena over the years and something that hopefully that they can get sorted down in the offseason. Big block and now chasing that one down is Poet. Poet working with it on the back end. He'll pass it across. Twister's shot deflected with the traffic in front and won't get through. And Kalen Russell plays it in. Not enough for an icing. Working with it is the Canucks though in the defensive zone as just out skating the Twister to that puck. And a quick shot there from the Twisters captain, Jacob Carlson, holding on to it with the plot of the fans. There's Noah Gilbert, and that's another thing that we talked about. Twisters heavily out shooting the Canucks early on in that last game, but again, coming out to down 3 nothing, able to tie it up and force overtime. It's been some of their shot selection, hoping that they would challenge Gilbert a little bit more on that and make use of their skill set with their shot selection. As a couple of those, Gilbert didn't have to move too much on in the other night. And it's been a thing also for the Twisters throughout the playoffs. And getting shots towards the net, but not getting high scoring opportunities out of them as the Canucks ice it down. 11.42 on the clock. Shots are 7-4 to four in favor of the Junior Canucks, leading by one in this one. Sutherland in on the draw against Price. And that loose puck picked up by the Twisters. Across to Wood. Wood can't hold on to that pass, and he'll play it down low to Van Dynes. Van Dynes couldn't scoop it up. Jalker works it to Van Dynes. Pressure by Price. Sutherland comes in to give him help and work it all the way across from the point to Wood. Wood is shot on net. Kicked out. Twisters. No one home to get that rebound as that was in a juicy location where Gilbert left that. Couldn't get it as close to the corner boards as he would like to as a goalkeeper. Price picking up that loose puck, working around behind the net. And jamming out that one in front, getting a shot away. Twisters just wide of the net. Canucks now controlling. Here they go the other way on the odd man rush 3-2. And Younger gets upended and comes in and trusts away a hard hit there. And that works against him there. And they score. It's the Canucks off to an early two-goal lead in this one. It's Younger finding the back of the net from William. And here's a look at the replay, and there Younger gets sat down. And a good play by the Canucks to hold the line. William works across to Younger, and it's Griffin Hyatt getting the third assist as well on that one. Yeah, and Pemina Valley once again with a lot of pressure in the St. James zone, but St. James able to clear it out. You know, two St. James players hit each other. The Pemina Valley Twisters have time to get this puck out, but can't they? Can't clear it past the line you get this to stick into 
Tyrone Wellen, he's gonna make you pay for it. Opens up some space for himself with a nice angle before feeding a uh, beautiful one-time goal over. Correction there on the assist. That wasn't Hyatt, that was Whiteley who held it in at the line. Uh, as Hyatt was the first one I saw come into frame. Working with a shot through traffic just wide of the net by the Canucks. Canucks working with it, play it down low. And Jacob Carroll's getting pressure now here by Caden Osterman, and he'll work it away from harm's way. Ironson holds it at the line, picked off by DeGrave. DeGrave sends it all the way down the ice, and that's gotta be enough for an icing as we're off to exciting high scoring game here with a couple of goals in the first 10 minutes for the Canucks, something a little bit different from the pace of play that we saw at Morris the other night, which had a lot of icings early on to the first 16 minutes. Yeah, and I know a theme in this series has been the fact that we've seen goals in bunches late in the period, but uh, St. James kind of flipping the script today and a worst possible start for Pemina Valley on the scoreboard, especially in an elimination game where St. James has been perfect in those pretty much the last two seasons. Working with it on the near side is Gertzen, and he'll try and get away from Kale Price. DeGrange working at it with Weeb, and Weeb's able to push it just enough all the way into the Canucks zone where the Canucks regroup, who have been out skating this Twisters team, making that use of their speed. As the Twisters play it in, now Dave Grave out racing Neil, but Neil got him on the positioning and he'll work it out to Price. Price can't clear, gets it right back on his stick. He'll have another go at it. Long stretch pass and won't be offside as a little bit of a tango ensues here in the high slot in between Chase Sovey and Wood, and Wood gives him a little stick after the play as the referee blows that one down, and here's a look at the replay of a little bit of a contact. It wasn't offside, and a little bit of a scrum there going on. Nine minutes exactly on the clock. Shots are eight to five in favor of the Canucks. Off the draw, quick shot, jamming at it in front. And Price trying to work it away from harm's way. There's a shot by Phillips and uh, holding on and gloving that one is in. And shots 10 to five now. Logan ends for the most part has made some solid saves in this game. I think the first one is the only one you'd really have back. The second one is kind of hope that it hits you if you make it across, right? Really tough to stop a Chris one-time pass like that, uh, that well and connected with his teammate on. Off the draw, Hepner working with the puck. Hepner with some space there and bouncing puck dangerously in front and Hepner gloves that to Weeb and they continue on. Referee missed that when he was looking right at the hand pass. Phillips, he'll play it across. Canucks on the near side off the stick of Matthew Mason Vandell and into the zone. Still working with it. Weeb, he'll play it across. Bouncing puck off a couple sticks, hard hit there. Still fighting with it. That puck comes down all the way down the ice. Einerson, he'll hold on to that one. Pass across. And walking in comes Thornton. He'll play it in. Working it away now is the goalkeeper. Back to Einerson. Einerson trying to hold that the line. Does a nice play to work it up to Romanuk. He'll take a hard hit. Carls picks up the loose puck and the Twisters kick it out of the zone. Ends leaves it for Russell behind the net. 7.40 on the clock. Jacob Carls on the near side, off the stick of Jolker. Jolker, he'll play it ahead off of, Suther of the Slade Sutherland stick. Kalen Russell, right up center ice, looking. And he couldn't get a shot away. And that puck comes up in the net and giving us a stoppage in play here. And Pemina Valley, I mean, they've been able to dump it in, go in on the four check, but it's been really tough for them to get any speed going, anything of substance through the neutral zone right now. That's a credit to, I think, St. James' system, but you gotta start connecting and cradling on these passes or it's gonna be a really long night for this Twisters team. And on the skirmish off the draw, still fighting with it is Zinerson, as well as 
weave and weave now trying to prevail with the puck as he gets knocked down the hand pass to himself from Anderson picked up here by the Canucks here come the Canucks two on two trying to feed it to Osterman was the 17 of Cole Younger and Gertzen working it out he was the hero here back in game one the Twisters only win in the series in which he had two goals and again Gertzen just couldn't get a stick on that one that'll be a nice charge against the Twisters six 46 on the clock. Shots are 11 to 5 in favor of the Canucks, up by two in this one. And you know, taking a look at Pamela Valley in this series, uh, Riley Gertson has been really good. Two goals in game one. Hepner with a goal and two assists uh, in these finals so far. Slade Southern, of course, with two goals last night. But this top line has to get going again. The top end boys for St. James has. So it's time for Pamela Valley to match in that aspect. Canucks working out of their own zone, and now here they come, and it's Price. Price looking. He'll play it down low. Picked up by the 20 of Grindle, and that bounces off the referee as the Twisters try and clear it down. Still working with it. And now Price. He'll hand pass that to himself. You're back now here across from Neil, and there's a shot loose puck in front on the attempt from Bruce. Canucks couldn't get it in the slot. As Bruce, he'll fire that one in on net, off the glove of Hepner, up in there. As ends getting in with it, getting a little bit of a poke check there to Butler as he skates on by. Off the stick of the Canucks. Canucks now to the point, and that shot blocked by Cohen Thomas. Thomas working at Bruce. He'll flutter that one in off the end boards. William first back. He'll work it back to Price. Price now with the puck. Controlling his shot on net and gloved and holding on his ends. And Pemina Valley, a great job earlier on in the sequence there to clear away the rebounds. I believe Enns also getting a stick in there. But one thing that I think could also cause problems for the Twisters in this matchup is if you guys didn't catch it, they got about three players on one side. Look for St. James to look to capitalize on that missed coverage, that missed structure as this game goes along. Off the draw, Twisters won it. Trying to clear it out, but good forecheck from William and Mason Vandell keeps it in for the Canucks. Back to the point. Hey, Phillips this shot deflected in on that ends, makes a nice save. And the rebound picked up by Weeb. Weeb, he'll play it ahead. And Carls walks in, fires that one off the skate. Uh, Brothostal back to the point. Now Jacob Carls, he'll center that one. Twisters trying to get a whack at it. And they couldn't. It's a miscommunication there as that puck goes between the two demon with five to go in the opening frame and Jacob Carls he'll work that around as the tiredness of the twisters starting to show here in this one early on as Slade Sutherland comes across the line Van and playing that back is Wood from Sutherland down low is Van Dines across to Wood Wood getting it back and that's going to get scooped up by Jolker he fires that one just wide of the net Van Dyne's pressuring that puck, and he'll play it in down low. Alex Van Dyne's the intended target on that one. Scooped up by the Canucks. Canucks can't get out of their own zone. And that's bad down by a high stick by Sutherland. Canucks clear it in. And this Thorson ends way over his net to play that puck. Scooped up by the Canucks. All is dangerous here for the Twisters as Whiteley fires that one in, and a quick flash of the leather through traffic is in. You can see there a bit of a misplay, uh, yeah, a misplay there by Enns trying to rim this around. And uh, once again, St. James working this from one end of the ice to the other in terms of east-west and having some success in getting shots through. Off the draw, Hepner now working with it for the Twisters. No play that ahead. And that's picked off by Chase Sobey. Good rush then from him, but... Weeb worked harder out there and it's able to get the puck up to Hepner and Der Weeb getting that out of the zone to Hepner and now scoops up the puck down low. Where the Canucks will pick up the puck as it rolls off the stick of Weeb. Loose puck controlled by the junior Canucks as Whiteley circles in his own zone making space and time trying to work it here on the near side going cross ice picked off by Weeb as Weeb trying to work it to the grave. And again, the wall of the Canucks at the blue line. Have other plans for that one. As the Twisters have another go at it. Gertzen centers that across and couldn't get a shot away. It was a 
Twister's flying into the slot as Weeb. Weeb now works back to Carlos. Jeff Carlos shot through traffic. A nice save by Gilbert. Another whack at it from the Twisters. And that won't go. And here's the opportunity for Renault, for Romanuk as Romanuk walks in, same side he scored to opening this one off, and says the answer, wrap around off a twister stick in front of DeGrave, and Enz holds on as the net comes off. Here's a look at the twister scoring opportunity at the other end of the ice, as centering it there, and then right back to Carlson, the flash of the leather. Holding on for that one was Noah Gilbert having the answer, as then stretches out. And it's ready to go, 3.02 on the clock. Shot 16 to six in favor of this dominating Canucks team. On the scrum behind the net, Canucks quick shot. And ends having the answer on that one as Orchard plays it into the zone. Bergman working with that. I can say Wood walks into that one blocked off the skate of the 22 there of Osterman. Osterman now works with it. He'll play that ahead to Neil. Neil trying to center that one. Uh, and that gets broken off by a couple sticks where, we, where Wood plays that ahead. And he gets taken down by Bruce. Wood couldn't find the puck in his feet. And now he'll send it into the zone. Twister's got a tag at the line, 220 on the clock. Younger with the puck on his stick. Cole Younger, he'll center that one ahead to Hyatt. Griffin Hyatt walking in. Griffin Hyatt on the wraparound. He'll put that off the side of the netting and the net comes off again and what's going to bring an uproar here from the crowd and it's a little bit of a shame it's not Enz's fault but it's just a soft ice there around the net and really killing the momentum in this hockey game though the Canucks still up 2-0 and highly out shooting the Twisters and which the Twisters have been able to keep them at bay as the Twisters average only giving up about three goals a game which is their average here in this series and that has been their average all Season as the Twisters clear that in and off or icing waved off by the far official. Xander Carls trying to center that. And Carls works it back to the point. Picked off by here by the all speedy Canucks was Matthew Mason Vandell. And going hard into the boards is a Canuck. That was William. And uh, Mason Vandell prevails with the puck. And Ross Sight plays it in. 95 seconds on the clock here in the opening frame. Can't come soon enough here for the Twisters as Carls plays it in down low. And Noah Gilbert works away from harm's way. Loose puck picked up by the Twisters. A late one for them. And there's an opportunity. And that one just whizzes high of the net. Played in by Kalen Russell. And the Canucks just work it. Back to neutral ice. For the Twisters captain plays it in off the stick of Slade Sutherland all the way down. And icing waved off just verbally as it gets cleared out of the zone by the Canucks. Twisters now trying to work with that puck. I'll playing a little bit sloppy with it. And Chase Sobey will take it into the attack zone. Now Jalker trying to go the other way. He'll work it to Alex Van Dines. Alex Van Dines walks in, fires, rebound, and he couldn't get a shot away in the dying 40 seconds. And with that, we got a nice opportunity here for Sobe going the other way. Enz makes the save, the net comes off the moorings again. Referee quickly puts it back on. Romanuk circles, firing that one wide of the net with 25 to go. And the Twisters clear it out to neutral ice. Where Neil controls as he'll escape back into his own zone before playing across to Bruce. Bruce works it in off a couple sticks. And off the stick of Jalker to Neil. Neil with it. Into the zone come the Canucks. Seven to go on the clock. Centering in front. Ends has the save. And with that, the skirmish in the boards will be what will have to end off the first 20. Your shots, 18 to 8. In favor of the St. James Canucks after one. And with that, we will head to the scoring summary here in the first period. And your first period scoring summary here in this one. Just waiting for it to come up here for the times. Started off here for Austin Romanuk, getting his fifth of the postseason for Brady Whiteley. 
at 346. Cole Younger followed him up from Tyrone Willian and Brady Whiteley at 911. And with that, the, Twi the Canucks lead the Twisters 2-0 here in a pivotal game five, a chance to bring home the Jack McKenzie Trophy at home ice for the third time in a row for this Canucks team. And they lead, like I said, on the shot board, 18 to eight. And with that, we'll be back with you following the commercial break. Come and discover the warmth and hospitality of Morris, home of the thrilling Manitoba Stampede. Nestled as the central hub on Highway 75, Morris is more than a town. It's a thriving nexus of business and community with new industrial opportunities ready to break ground. Join us and make Morris your next investment. A co-op is not a building. It's not a gas bar, a home center, or a food store. A co-op is a group of people working together to help each other. To feed, to fuel, to build community. This is where we work. This is where we live. This is who we are. We are early risers. We are trusted neighbors. We are committed to serving you. We are co-op. Paul Brandt Trucking, a chance meeting years ago that turned into an incredible friendship. Turns out we have the same name. Now that's something that doesn't happen every day. But as I've had the opportunity to work with this exceptional award-winning company, I've come to understand that there is something that happens every day with Morris Manitoba's Paul Brandt Trucking. They deliver quality. Paul Brandt Trucking has helped me to do business better. My trucking company of choice since they first appeared in the Convoy video, their world-class fleet and personnel literally keep the show on the road delivering our gear and stage production each and every night. Congratulations, Paul Brandt Trucking, on 50 years of traditional values, modern methods, and for service with excellence on every single run. We'll catch you on the flip-flop. Bye-bye. Saving for your child's education doesn't need to be stressful. Access offers a wide range of investment options to help you and your family's future, like a registered education savings plan. With the flexibility to deposit any time throughout the year, you decide when and how much to contribute, making it easy to save for your child's education. Contact us today to start your savings plan so you can spend more time celebrating your child's future. Access Credit Union, where you need us to be.
are back here at Ab McDonald Arena. I'm your color commentator, uh, the G Show, here with, of course, Bentley, the producer, the, the host, the play-by-play -play commentator. And yeah, uh, St. James, 18 to eight in shots. They're favored after the first. Uh, Romanuk and Younger getting the goals. And Bentley, just a, a period where Pemina Valley, they had their chances, but St. James just looking at the top of their game and uh, close out Sunday potentially for them in this one. Yeah, the Canucks, they came in here, they really had the fire, and especially you knew whoever won game four with that being going all the way to double overtime in a late night out in Morris. You knew that either it's going to be a long bus ride back for the Canucks or they're going to come back and they're going to have the fire with a chance to win a championship in the St. James Civic Center here at McDonald Arena, which they have not done since the 90s as the Canucks or the Twisters, mind you, walk in right back in here is Hepner firing that one off the blocker and back to Paulette. Paulette works that across and still jamming at that one. Well, that went into the zone. William across to Anderson. And Anderson works it to Matthew Mason Vandell and into the zone. William giving chase. William controlling with that puck in the attack zone. Back to Anderson. His shot in on ends and ends holds on for a whistle. Bring us our first stoppage in play. Yeah, and ends, I mean, a pretty good period for him overall. There was one goal he would have liked to have back, as mentioned. A tough one-timer to shot that was put, to stop that was put in by Younger. Uh, but one thing that Pemina Valley has done good has been allowing him to see the shots from the points, boxing out very well, as mentioned before. Off the draw. Working with the Twisters, they play that across. And trying to clear that off a couple sticks that comes all the way down, and that will be an icing. Bring us to stop at your play. And yeah, quite a bit of icings in the first period compared to what I've seen in this series so far. I think another big thing for Pemina Valley is going to be how do the wingers step up in their defensive zone to help chip it out with more success like we've seen St. James wingers really stepping up in their own end doing that. That's something I'll be looking for in this game moving forward. And stoppage in play there as they get ready to get going again here. Again, we look at that first period shots, 18 to 8. And again, I didn't go over your scoring recap for you, but it's Austin Romanock. Oh, correction there, Ashton Romanock opening up the scoring, and Cole Younger complimenting him, giving that Canucks their two goal lead here at home ice. And we know the Twisters can come back down. They've done it before in the series, they've done it last night. And we'll see if they still have enough juice in the tank as they were looking pretty tired in that overtime especially double overtime frames and definitely like I said early on you don't want to be playing down especially against either one of these teams especially early on off the draw still working with it into the zone comes Weave. Neil he'll pick that one off but comes all the way down to Jacob Carroll's Carl's plays it across Kalen Russell back in the lap turns that one over Younger walks in fires and into the netting bring us a stoppage in play here at eight, at nine, at eighteen, nineteen. Yeah, and it ends up being number twenty-two and Callan Russell who ends up whipping on this puck, trying to pass it out of the zone. Before that, Pemina Valley doing a good job of working it quickly east to west, but St. James with a really good D line or defensive line there, and uh, Younger coming in with a bunch of space, rings iron, almost three nothing in his second goal of the game. Twister's dangerously watching the line as Jonkers, he works it in tight off a couple sticks, picked up by Van Dines, back to the point, and that shot by Van Dines won't go, Sutherland holds the line, he'll play to Alex Van Dines, his shot on net, kicked out quick shot by the Twisters, knocked the bottle off the net, but didn't find the back of the net. Nagange working with it, he takes a hard hit from Alex Van Dines, as the puck comes all the way to ends, ends working it. Van Dines playing it on the near side. Sutherland plays it across. Twisters into the zone, quick shot. Rebound and they score. And the Twisters are back in this one. And they cut the Canucks lead in half. Canucks arguing. And I don't know 
Not much they have to argue. Here's a look as the twisters fly by. Trying to swing up at Slate Sutherland from Alex Van Dines. Here's a replay as Sutherland getting the pass to Van Dines. Van Dines with the shot and Sutherland cleaning up the rebound. So Slade Sutherland, the man who was the Twister's go-to guy in game number four, coming into this one and helping the Twisters get back into this one, bring some life here to the Twisters in game five, but jumping right back on Thorson and a quick shot ends holding on. And I know I mentioned this all too much, but Again, it's a dangerous opportunity. You have to jump on a team right after a goal and to come out there and when one team can just sit back and get flat-footed, it's a really great time just to hop on there and try and get another quick one back. And that's totally what the Canucks had in their mindset, trying to regroup and get back to that two-goal lead off that quick opportunity there by Thornton. Twister's controlling on the near side. And that's suddenly that'll be a six of the postseason. As he climbs the Twisters postseason points leaders. Working with it. Twisters, they get it out of the zone just for a big glove down. Twisters got two and one going the other way. Walking in. Carls, rebound. And off the stick of Sobey. Can't find it. Twisters control back to the point. Dick, he'll work that across. To Hepner. He'll fire it just wide of the net. Still working with it. Down low. Weave. He'll play it to Carls. Carls working it in tight on the tie up. There, and Poet hits ice. Still fighting for that puck. Comes bouncing puck out onto the stick of Romanuk. Romanuk through traffic, and he won't hold on to that one as Cohen Thomas has opportunity going the other way. Pressure by Bruce, and he'll play it into the zone where Neil will pick it up. Neil working it the other way. Carls picking it up. And he'll play that right back into the zone. Bergman and Orchard applying pressure for the Twisters. And Orchard, after resting for a couple games, out on the ice for the Twisters. Kale Price scooping that puck up across to William, trying to get it back to Price. Price gets it off the Twister stick. Working it down low. William, all is dangerous on the wraparound. Jamming at ends down in this Canucks score. And the Canucks regroup and get that two goal lead again. Just as I mentioned early on in that one, both teams playing hard and the life is just back in this building. And it is William from Neil on the goal. Here's a look at the replay. As William's gonna get it from Price down low and right there gets the pass to Neil who finds the back of the net and restores the two goal lead for the Canucks. Up the draw, Vandell, he'll turn that over to Weave. Weave, looking. Trying to find that loose puck in traffic. Still working with it, Twister's able to hold that the line. Quick shot in on Gilbert, rebound in front. Twister's trying to hold on to it in the high slot. Off the stick of Matthew Mason Vandell off his skate, now to Price. And Price will play that in correction, that's Matthew Mason Vandell who got the assist, not Price. And then walking in, firing that one just over the net's William. And he takes a hard bump. And it's going to be a penalty for a cross check. Here's a look at the replay on that. As the Canucks get tonight's opening power play. And there's the cross check. And not a great play there by the Twisters. As the Canucks get their first power play. And your Ripple Insurance power play stats coming in here. Your special team stats, the Canucks in the postseason, 25.6 is their power play percentage. Twister's penalty kill, 93.8. And we got some you can't beat us chance going on, but a cross check to Tyrone Willen, putting this St. James team on the power play, and great job by him to finish off that wraparound chance initially to regain that two-goal lead, and right as Pound of Valley, Looks like they're about to crawl back to potentially tie it. St. James regains a two-goal lead. They have a chance to go up three here on a good power play if it's executed well. Twisters killed off the two power play opportunities for the Canucks last night, including the one that crossed over into overtime. 
Now working with it here is Whiteley. Whiteley through traffic. He'll play it ahead to Cole Younger. Younger walking into the zone. And he'll just play that down low. With the hard chase there for the puck. And the twister is able to prevail as Dick. As he outraces Pace and Butler for that puck. And he'll send it all the way down. A minute 05 to go here on the St. James Canucks opening power play in this one. Neil, he'll work it ahead. William walks into the zone. And the Twisters back check. Gets it all the way out to Price. Holding it in is Whiteley. We're trying to work it down low to Price. Off the stick of high to Price. Price to Whiteley. Across to Neil at the line. Down low to William. William fires in tight. And the goaltender down. But still couldn't get any good wax at it and a hard hit. Looks like William took again behind the play as William getting in some physical activity behind the play as the Twisters take it the other way. Now Neil, he'll walk in. He has William as him and Jacob Carrolls were going at it. Neil walking in, down low to William. William trying to center that. And the, the Canucks score. Much to the demise of the Twisters, they wanted a penalty coming up there. We'll see here on the replay as we'll get your goal scorer on the power play. It's Griffin Hyatt who gets the power play goal. And here's a look at the replay. As Hyatt walks in. And they wanted to call him on interference there is what they thought as he took down Xander Carls, another OS. Hyatt found the netting pass ends. And it's a 4-1 lead for the Canucks here. The largest tying it for the largest margin of the playoffs. And we got a goaltender change up here. Owen the Lurok is back in for the Twisters. So 26 minutes and 45 seconds is all that's going to happen here for ends. And that'll be the end to his night. As the Twisters working it in the defensive zone, trying to get it out, pressured hard by the Canucks. That one gets cleared out of the zone. All the way down, Weeb walking into the zone. He'll send that to the grave across. And the skates, Twisters whacking at the loose puck. Still working with it. Goalkeeper down. And that loose puck comes all the way out. Here's a chance for Romanuk. Romanuk going the other way. And Dick makes a great defensive play, knocking it off of the stick of Romanuk. Gertson now, he'll work it ahead and get it right back from Weeb, trying to get it back to Weeb on the tic-tac-toe. Gertson on the backhand, kicked into the side. Boards as Gertson gets up a price, and it's a push and shoving right from the ref there. So on Einerson, and they're playing on much to the dismise as the physicality ramping up, and Romana couldn't find the back of the net. He had a great opportunity there as the rock was sprawled out as the physicality Stepping up in this one, Van Dyne centers that across in his pass. Off, and he couldn't find Gertzen who goes for a change. Jalker steps on for him. Younger, he'll work that one back. And into the zone, the Canucks clear it. The Rock, he'll work it, trying to get to Sutherland. The lone goal scorer for the Twisters in this one. On the near side, Twisters send that into the zone. Brothers gets it right away, back to neutral ice. He'll control now in his own zone, 11.36 on the clock. Here in the central frame. And that gets cleared in by the Canucks. Twisters trying a long stretch pass to Van Dynes. Van Dynes on the near side. He'll clear it in on the dump and chase. Jolker after Whiteley, and Whiteley works it ahead. Way beating Price to that puck. Now here come the Twisters at the line. Hebner fires that one, and trying to glove that in front. Couldn't hold on to it was Gilbert, but his team able to clear the zone for a moment as the Twisters send it right back in with 11 to go. Jamming at that puck, Jolliker to Sutherland. Sutherland, he'll work it across. Firing, and the Twisters put that just over the net. And Matthew Mason Vandell having an opportunity, and Hepner denies that opportunity, delayed offside, as they're going to say Vandell was... Matthew Mason Vandell is offside. Coming into that one is Poet now. Has the same thing going against him as he's offside. Bring a stoppage of play here at 10.37.
And man, the Twisters, they found ways to come down with speed, establish the St. James zone with success, even get the puck in high danger scoring areas for great chances. It's just that final uh, execution on the passes that they can't connect with right now. And we've seen St. James. I mean, even looking back to that power play goal that they go up 4-1 on, right? Pemina Valley has a shorthanded chance. They get stopped, and then they're caught chasing the play back where St. James has their numbers and executed at a high level with that tic-tac-toe. Continuing his kneel now, chase by Carl Zaru from behind the safety of his goal. Ahead to Thornton. Thornton on the near side. He'll work that puck all the way down. Still has it on his stick to Neil. Neil working at it. And continuing with it. Shot there on the net. Picked up by Hepner. Trying to clear it. And a big hit there from Poet. As the Twisters get some physicality going here in this one to make up for their scoring as we enter the back half here of game number five. Twisters in their own zone is Dick. He'll play it across. Hepner now skating with speed off a couple sticks. Jolliker plays it into the zone. Puck scooped right off his stick though to Neil. Neil plays it across. And Neil throws. This got a little bit of a issue there. I didn't see that. It looked like he broke the stick of. See that on the replay. We'll look at the hit instead. Looked like Neil though broke Orchard stick. And there's a nice hit from Poet there, right from the bench of the Canucks, and helping the Twisters get some momentum going. Faceoff's going to come out of the zone as Anderson having a little bit of chat with the referee before the puck dropped. 9.26 on the clock. Shots are 26 to 15 in favor of the Canucks, who have expanded their lead. It's now a 4 1 Canucks lead. Anderson off the draw. He'll take it right into the Twister zone, pressured by Weeb. Continuing through the contact. William trying to center that one. Quick shot in on net. And the Twisters make sure he doesn't get there with the traffic in front as Jacob Carls works it the other way. Up a couple sticks. William plays it in down low. Matthew Mason Vandell chasing after that puck. Price with the puck on his stick. He'll play it down to Matthew Mason Vandell trying to center that one. And off the stick of Whiteley. He can't hold on at the line. Anderson sends it right back in. Scooping that puck up. Matthew Mason Vandell playing around behind the net. Carl's working it out away from Younger. And Anderson doing his part, though, for the Canucks, holding the line. And now coming in and forcing Weep to create a turnover. And what is a turnover now to Younger? Right behind the net, walking in is the Canucks. And that opportunity won't go for them. Twisters now calm it down and play their style of slower hockey. And they'll turn it over to Anderson. Anderson sends it right into the Twisters zone. Winning bad turnover there by the Twisters captain, Caden Osterman. He gets stoned on the quick shot. Working now with that puck. Twisters trying to get it out as they were caught flat footed there on that Osterman opportunity. Brothers all he'll play that across. And Griffin Hyde into the zone. He clears that puck. Puck picked up by Alex Van Dines, and he'll send that ice wide as Jolker trying to pick it up. And Phillips, Jacob Phillips, able to get it out of the zone. Now Hepner, he'll scoop it up in his own blue line. Twister's got two on two going the other way. Jolker splits the D, walks in, fires, and holding on for a whistle is Gilbert. Well, skill on full display there from Jolliker. He keeps with this puck. A little soft touch dangle inside, outside before firing one that uh, Gilbert didn't have the easiest time with. It looked like he had to squeeze it a bit, but uh, number 30 been on the top of his game. 15 saves on 16 shots. 11 and 1 coming into tonight's game. And looking to cap off, of course. Uh, Beautiful MMJHL career with a thir third straight championship tonight. Off the draw, Twisters controlling, trying to get some goal scoring going, and they clear that up in the netting. That'll bring a stop at your play. And for the Twisters, uh, you know, for themselves, 
when we talk about the chances, like they've been there for this Twisters team, despite the shots being 27 to 16. They've also left a lot of chances off the boards just from the missed passes. If they can find a way to get a bit more better on their puck management, uh, I think that could serve them well. Maybe just focus on getting pucks on net and overloading, crashing the net. I know it's tough to do, easier said than done, but that may be the play. Grindle walking in, firing that one. And on the rock, loose puck laying there in the rock. Now able to hold on for a whistle at 6.54 as the shots climb for the Canucks to 28 to 16 in their favor, leading this one 4-0, or 4-1, on, which they came alive here way later on in this frame and just built on what they did in the second period after the Twisters were able to split the lead in half. Uh, and you can just see the reaction there from Gertzen as he skated off to the bench and just shows the Twisters looking a little bit tired and depleted from last night's game. Anderson fires that one just wide, chopped in front by Thornton and the blocker saved by LaRock. Working with it now, here come the Twisters. Two on two opportunity going the other way. For Paulette, Paulette walks in, fires and the rebound. Couldn't corral that one for the Twisters and that comes all the way down the ice. Jonathan Dick working with it and up off the forehand, he'll work that into the zone. Around behind the net. Canucks trying to work it out and they'll turn that one over. Picked right back up by Romanuk after a nice hit there. Gave the Canucks the puck back. That one flutters right over there. the goal and calming it down now. Here's Whiteley with 6.03 to go in the second. Chase Sobey, he'll pass it across. And Ironson just clears it in and goes for a change. Russell, he'll work that one to Orchard. And off the stick of Cohen Thomas. Xander Carroll's bouncing puck, trying to work it ahead. Kale Price now has it on his stick, and he'll wait. And he, with that, he's able to get it past Orchard, clear it all the way down. Matthew Mason Vandell got a stick on it, no icing. As Hepner works that to Russell, and picked up by the Canucks at the point. Broken up off the stick of Orchard. Orchard now. Long stretch pass. Alexander Carls. Carls through traffic. And Jacob Phillips beating him to the puck. And he won't get it out as Russell scoops that puck up. Centers into the slot. Now Hepner from the high slot. Across to Orchard trying to calm down that bouncing biscuit. Now come all the way around to Hepner. Hepner at the line with five to go. Down low to Xander Carls. Off a couple sticks. Courts or Orchard plays it down low, behind the net. Phillips trying to get his stick on it. Picked up by the Canucks. And here's an opportunity going the other way as the Canucks clear that one into the zone. Still working with it here. Weeb, he'll play it across. Long stretch pass to Gertzen. Gertzen still working with it. Into the zone and they come. Gertzen trying to center. Under four to go. Jamming at that loose puck. And they couldn't get a shot away. Carls, he'll pass it across. And now Weeb, he'll take a hit as he had to skate up to that puck before getting it into the attack zone. Where the Canucks keeping the twisters at bay so far. As Osterman plays it in with some physical activity to follow with. Gertz and leaving. Paul then at the line as walking into that one. There's a shot just wide of the net. And we got a stoppage in play. And a little bit of physical activity coming in down low. Cole Younger going at it. As well as Jacob Carls, it looks like. Yeah, and a bit of rough stuff after the play here. I think we can expect to see more of this as this game goes along. Uh, but for the Pemina Valley Twisters, I mean, in a way they're in familiar territory, but they cut into that three goal lead uh, pretty quickly in that second period yesterday to draw it to three, two only being down by that, heading into the third. So now this team is on the power play, younger in the box. It's time to go to work on a power play that, even though they had a goal yesterday, has been under 10% this postseason, but boy, there's every time they need one, it's now. And off the draw, 
working with it off a couple of sticks, twisters, hold that the blind. Weave with it. Weave, he'll play it to the grave. The grave. Hooking in. He's got Russell out there as well as Southern and Gertzen. Gertzen now with the puck. Getting watched now by Price. Across to Gertzen as Romanock closes in on him. Into the slot. There's a shot for the Twisters, and that doesn't get through traffic. Matthew Mason, Vandell, and Aiden Bruce. The penalty killer is also out there. And with Whiteley. Back to the point. There's a shot for the Twisters. And again, having the answer is Noah Gilbert. Twister still controlling with a minute 10 to go. Sutherland, his quick shot. Backhand across, sprawling out. As the goalkeeper puck still loose with Gilbert down, firing off the crossbar, up and out play. And now Gertson going after a Canuck in front and Matthew Mason Vandell steps in to break that one up. Here's a look at the replay. And that's Sutherland, a couple opportunities in tight, as well as Gertson. And the puck gets kicked out and walking in on the shot. Sorry, didn't have that one there for you. Was the opportunity for the Twisters. That fires up off the bar and out of play. The Rempel Insurance special team stats. Twisters power play, top power play in the league. Not so much, though, in this postseason as they were throughout the regular season. Regular or postseason stats coming in at 9.5. Meanwhile, the penalty kill 85.4%, which is pretty. Good, always good when your power when your penalty kill is above 80 percent. That's so what the Canucks have this postseason. Twisters one for two the other night on the power plays. The G Show Graham mentioned earlier on here as the Canucks work it back to the point. Twisters now there's a shot through traffic rebound lay loose, and the Canucks able to clear it all the way down the ice. 25 seconds remaining on the younger call. Twisters on the near side. Now cutting right up Broadway and into the zone comes Kyle Van Dines. And Kyle Van Dines leaves a hard hit and that's gonna draw a penalty and possibly more action. We got four and four hockey going here. And a dangerous check there. I'll say it's probably gonna be a board. It's gonna be a charge. Here's a look at the hit. As the Canucks 0 for 1 on the power play, they'll get another chance out. There's the hard hit as the Canucks player goes into the boards. So we'll go four on four for five seconds, then it'll be power play time for St. James until if they, of course, score earlier than the time remaining. But Pembina Valley was some good looks on that power play, just couldn't connect on their chances. And St. James doing the little things right, the little details once again. And oh, almost a cross crease pass. Connected on there. So dangerous moving the puck, this Canucks team, when they have that extra space. No matter how good this Twister's penalty kill has been. Price, he'll work it across to Aiden Bruce. Now picked up by Whiteley. Whiteley leaving it on to Neal. As Neal walks into the, playing that ahead and neutral ice, and Price just plays it into the zone. Mike Kepner is first one back, and he'll send that all the way down ice wide. And with 70 seconds to go and 78 seconds on the man vantage for the Canucks, Neil will work from his own zone across to Whiteley. And Brady Whiteley just plays it in for a price. Price, he gets taken out of the play as we're into the final minute here of the middle frame. Canucks cycle it around to the point to Neil. Neil, he'll play it down to Whiteley, back to Neil. Neil across, has a shot by William, and sorry, pass down low, as William will get it back. William to Neil, across for Whiteley, and having the answer on that opportunity is Owen LaRock. And for Pemina Valley, doing a good job of keeping it to the outside, but this is how good and skilled St. James is. Uh, they get theirs, no matter what, they work it around the perimeter, they find, uh, it's Rory Neal finding Brady Whiteley for a quick one-timer pass. Whiteley with a great job finding that quiet ice and being in a spot where no one is covering him. Twisters able to clear it out of the zone with 30 to go. Walking in, comes Whiteley. He'll fire that one just wide. And he'll scoop up his own rebound. Quick shot in and the opportunity there denied by the Rock as Neil scoops it up at center ice. 
Neal around the center ice circle with 10 to go. Plays it in. Back to Whiteley. Across to Neal. Will the Canucks get another late goal? And that won't happen as that comes all the way down. And there's the horn. And it'll be eight seconds remaining on the Canucks. Man advantage coming in to the third frame. And with you, we'll go over the shots here in the period. Meanwhile, the shots for the Canucks. Canucks getting a bunch of shots there on the board. Total of 14, giving them a total of 32 through 40. Meanwhile, for the Pemina Valley Twisters, they jumped up a lot from their eight shots that they had in the first period. And they scored a total of 13 shots in on Gilbert, giving them a total of 21 shots through 40. Both teams 0 for 1 on their power play opportunities. Though Canucks still have eight seconds remaining on theirs when we resume play. And with that, three goals scored here in the second period. It all started off with Slade Sutherland getting his fourth in the playoffs from Kyle Van Dyne's 229 into the frame. And not too long after that, at 415, Tyrone William found his seventh of the playoffs from Kale Price and Matthew Mason Van Dell. Griffin Hutt got the power play goal, his fourth of the postseason from Tyrone William and Roy Neal at 645. And that helped the Canucks get back to their three goal lead. And the Twisters again will have to come back from a three goal lead if they want a chance to extend this series. Something they did the other night, although they couldn't find the win in the end. And hoping to have a better result in this one tonight. Yeah, and of course, Pemina Valley making the goaltending change of taking out ends to put in LaRock. He made some huge saves in that period, and a huge save there on that final one-timer shot I spoke about whitely taking. But at 2 nothing, I mean, Pemina Valley finds a way to work it smoothly through the neutral zone. They get uh, behind the St. James backcheckers, their forwards, and they're able to stretch the ice east to west with a nice pass over to Slade Southern who uh, of course makes no mistake on it, but I mean, St. James taking advantage shortly after on, on a power play chance, uh, you know, even strength, just executing on the little details when this Pound of Valley Twisters team, I, I truly believe that's been the difference over the course of this series as it's gone on. Uh, great job by Blair Mooney and his staff to correct the game of their structure and everything. Uh, since game one, these players have responded for St. James, and this is the reason why this team is back-to-back -back champs. It's going to take the best 20 minutes of Pemina Valley's season, I think, to get back in this one. Still eight seconds of penalty time to kill. Then you got to deal with cutting into a three-goal lead, and you got to take it one goal at a time, not get too far ahead of yourself. So, uh, got to expect... The best effort all season long, I gotta say, from Pemina Valley in this third, if they're gonna wanna have a chance here, Bentley. Come and discover the warmth and hospitality of Morris, home of the thrilling Manitoba Stampede. Nestled as the central hub on Highway 75, Morris is more than a town. It's a thriving nexus of business and community with new industrial opportunities ready to break ground. Join us and make Morris your next investment. A co-op is not a building. It's not a gas bar, a home center, or a food store. A co-op is a group of people working together to help each other. To feed, to fuel, to build community. This is where we work. This is where we live. This is who we are. We are early risers, we are trusted neighbors, we are committed to serving you. We are Co-op. Paul Brandt Trucking, a chance meeting years ago that turned into an incredible friendship. 
Turns out we have the same name. Now that's something that doesn't happen every day. But as I've had the opportunity to work with this exceptional award-winning company, I've come to understand that there is something that happens every day with Morris Manitoba's Paul Brandt Trucking. They deliver quality. Paul Brandt Trucking has helped me to do business better. My trucking company of choice since they first appeared in the Convoy video, their world-class fleet and personnel literally keep the show on the road, delivering our gear and stage production each and every night. Congratulations. Congratulations, Paul Brandt Trucking, on 50 years of traditional values, modern methods, and for service with excellence on every single run. We'll catch you on the flip-flop. Bye-bye. Saving for your child's education doesn't need to be stressful. Access offers a wide range of investment options to help you and your family's future, like a registered education savings plan. With the flexibility to deposit any time throughout the year, you decide when and how much to contribute, making it easy to save for your child's education. Contact us today to start your savings plan so you can spend more time celebrating your child's future. Access Credit Union, where you need us to be.
And as the teams here skate out onto the ice, ready to go for the third period. Again, the Twisters needing a big comeback. Down big in this one, three nothing and a power play. Opportunity for the Canucks. Now four to one. Not a bad score though for uh, Though the Twisters will give them some hope if they remember when they won their first championship uh, in this series here that they've been going on against the Canucks. And the first two teams times these two teams met in the finals, it was a 4-1 Canucks lead going into the third period in game seven. And that one, the Twisters were able to win that one by a score of five to four. And what's your guy who had a big name in that series? Brian Bernards, who is the Twisters head coach now. And with that, we are underway here in the third period. And the dying seconds of the twist of the Canucks power play now come to an end. And the Canucks 0 for 2 on their first two power plays of the game. Working with it, here come the Canucks. Canucks. Ball is speedy up the far side. Playing it back into the slot, quick shot. The Rock has the answer on the opportunity. Still working with it. The Grave out there with a couple of guys and that loose puck now coming to Gertzen. Gertzen chops that one up. Looking now here, walking in and firing. Quick shot off the glass. The Grave. He'll look, he'll play that one back. There's a quick shot through traffic. And that puck comes all the way down the ice. And with that icing, that's how the first opening minute's going to start. Yeah, and mentioning, I mean, this Twisters team, even when they've been down in these games where they've lost three in a row, they've been able to come back like we saw yesterday, the game before that too, so... They haven't said die in any of these games. They haven't gone the final result they've wanted, but looking to uh, chime into their inner 2019 or 2018-19 team, which, like you said, mentioned down four to one and going into that third period of Game Seven and winning it five to four to claim a championship. Up the drum. Twister's controlling in their own zone. Carroll's works it, and there's an opportunity for Van Dines. Comes off his stick, and all the way down the ice, holding on is Gilbert for the whistle. And a good start for Pemina Valley, of course, uh, for this period. They had eight seconds of penalty kill time to, to kill off power play time for a pretty dangerous power play for this Canucks team, the best in the playoffs and the best in the league. So it's about taking those little steps in uh, the overall bigger picture here, which is looking to erase this three-goal deficit right now. Canucks in their own zone with the puck. And the Twister is able to hold it and walking in. Van Dyne's playing it back to Wood, and that gets picked off by some Canucks in front. Continuing to control the puck is the Canucks. As now, loose puck still working with it. Comes back, picked up now by Younger. That puck comes all the way down the ice. Icing waved. And a hard hit in there, and that's going to draw a penalty. And Wood took a shot after. We'll see if this evens itself out as the fight ensues down low. As we talked about physicality being a big part in this one. And now a helmet off of a Canuck as the fighting continues. As they continue to fight. Younger looking towards the box. Uh, Timekeeper and the scorekeeper wouldn't want to be them right now. They got get their pens out. They're definitely going to be busy. As we got two Canucks, we got Younger in the box as well as uh, 24 or 14. I can't see it. Yeah, 24. Uh, Jacob Phillips. And I'm going to take a guess at Woods in the box. 
for the Twisters on the original call. I think, I think the Twisters are going to get a power play out of this, is what it looks like. And the referees continue to talk about it. Yeah, and it starts with Caden Osman getting to that puck race first with speed. He ends up drawing what looked to be the initial penalty. Of course, Younger doesn't like it. He comes in to help defend his teammate. And I believe Osterman has his helmet thrown across the ice. He, he didn't like that very much either. He comes in to swing at a twister. I'm not too sure who it was, but a break here for the twisters if they're able to wind up out of this sequence with a, a power play because a blatant penalty they end up taking, which could result in uh, them being on a five on four here. And there's the replay of the hit. And don't have the scrum on the replay that ensued after that, but you all saw live here. And they're ready for the draw. It's going to be a Twister's power play. Um, it's nothing on the board yet. We're just going to see. I'm guessing it's going to be Osterman. I said Phillips early on. I think it's Osterman in the box without his helmet on. It is. So it'll be Kid and Osterman. Oh, yeah, Cole Younger's in the box from uh, the original part of the hit. But I thought the other Canuck was Jacob Phillips, and maybe hold everything here. Slade Sutherland's going over to the penalty box. And it's a penalty, two minutes to the 22 of Kalen Russell. Who, or sorry, to the 22, never mind. Looking at the wrong side of the scoreboard there. Dekid and Osterman. We wouldn't be surprised if it was Russell, but he wasn't on the ice who had the big hit in game number two, which led to his suspension. And back out in this one now as DeGray plays it in, and Russell out there with them at uh, the point. Now Russell with it. Looking. Russell waiting. He'll play it down low. Russell with the slap shot. And that can't get through the traffic in front. He'll try again and still work it at Weeb. Weeb plays it down low off the stick of a Canuck. Back to Weeb. Weeb works it across to Russell. Russell playing it down low, and a Canucks player got his stick thrown in there. No penalty. They continue on. Twisters, they fire just wide of the net. Was Weeb. And that puck comes all the way down and out of the zone. A minute 05 remaining here on Twisters power play. Number two of the night. As Russell. He'll skate ahead, and he'll swing that puck into the zone. Bergman giving chase, and that puck's going to work all the way out around the point where he'll be held in by Alex Van Dynes. It's a scrum ensuing there, and Chase Sobey able to clear it out of the zone where Kyle Van Dynes works it to Brett Bergman. Bergman comes into the zone. Bergman into the attack, so I'm trying to get a shot away, and Van Dynes going to hold it at the point. Kyle Van Dyne scoops it out of his feet. 25 to go on the man advantage. Bergman works that all the way around behind the net. Aiden Bruce scooping it up. Cohen Thomas now getting pressure by Bruce. A couple twisters come in to aid, including Van Dyne's. In tight. Can't see the twister number. It looks like it's Xander Carroll's. And he tried to center that to the point. That won't go. Puck comes all the way down, and the power play has expired for the Pimpton Valley Twisters. And Twisters clear that in and picked up by the Canucks here, even strength. And the Canucks will ice and I'll bring a stoppage in play at 15.36. Shots this period are zero for the Canucks, two for the Pemina Valley Twisters. And both men now can come out of the box as they've hit their two minutes and the whistle. Though Cole Younger looks like he's still in there. He might have got a 10 added as well. I'm not too sure about that one. Off the draw. Canucks controlling. They'll work that puck around. And here come the all speedy Canucks. Into the zone. Romanock in. Great defense there by Xander Carroll. breaking that one up. Jolker now with an opportunity going the other way. For the Twisters. Into the zone. Jolker still with the puck. And he can't play that back to the point. Picked off by Romanock. And Romanuk gets taken out of the play by Paulette. 
Off the stick of Roman up correction there as Sobe getting taken out of the play by Paulette as the 215s go at it and the twist is just cleared into the zone and that's how the opening five to the third period will end up. Dick across to Carls. Jacob Carls, long stretch pass off the stick. Xander Carls and into the zone. Canucks trying to work it out and that'll come up to Romanuk. Romanuk picking it up at the red line. He'll clear that in, in on the rock. The rock plays it into the end boards. And the Twisters up now to Gertzen. Gertzen into the zone. And Neil able to get his stick on that one, breaking it up. Payson Butler circles back, picks up the loose puck. A couple of the pickups there that the Canucks made at the trade deadline, helping them out. As scrambling to get on side as the Canucks there go in on the delayed offside. The Rock leaves it back for Russell. Off the stick of Gertzen, and Gertzen plays it into the zone, pressured by Neil. Neil will now get it, and Neil will send that all the way down. Twister's trying to flex that into the zone, picked off by Aiden Bruce. Aiden Bruce will get to Osterman. Osterman goes for a change, as Cole Younger is still in the box for the Canucks. Einerson with the puck on his stick. He'll play it in around, and LaRock leaving it back for Russell. Russell the Gertzen off of his stick. And on the tic-tac-toe to DeGrave. DeGrave walking in, trying to go around Einerson. Centers that one, and no twister could get their stick on that puck. There's a shot still. Shot's now 2-1 in favor of the twisters in the frame as the Canucks work from their own zone with the puck. Einerson trying to scoop back, and Weeb will pick that one off. And on the tic-tac-toe for the twisters, jamming at its Weeb. Puck loose beside the net. Sutherland, he'll work that back to Wood. There's a shot, and that one gets picked off by Sutherland. As Sutherland now races other 25 on the ice. Bouncing puck, Twister's trying to get a shot. Matthew Mason Vandell, here he comes the other way. And Wood makes a nice hit, and it's a penalty coming up. And Wood can't believe it. It's a trip, and it was a beautiful hit. And the Twister's fans can't believe it. Here's a look at the replay. I thought maybe a knee. But here it comes in and Wood playing a nice hit. And I, he, got, he got, I guess, the knee a little bit on it. I thought it was maybe going to be a kneeing, but a tripping call is was the last of what was going through my brain at that moment. But nonetheless, Wood's in the box and the Canucks have a great opportunity to follow up with their last power play and spread this lead to even more. Twister's cleared all the way down to start off. The drum. Neil, he'll put that into the zone. Glove down by Dick. Still working with it. And the Twister's cleared all the way down the ice. Neil, behind his own net. Still working with the puck on the near side. Here come the Canucks into the zone is William. Across, looking is Hyatt. Hyatt plays it right back. And Whiteley to Hyatt. Griffin Hyatt with the puck. Back to Whiteley. Across to Neil. Neil to William. William circles back. Still circling is William to Neil. And we got another penalty coming here to the Canucks, and they're not too happy about it. It's gonna be to Romanuk, and he's gonna get called with a slash, or right there it is, in the slot. And Price still arguing the case of his teammate. And we got even strength going on here. Four on four for 59 seconds. And Cole Younger was charged with a double minor, and that was the difference there in those penalties early on that we talked about. So there's some clarity there. Twister's controlling here on the 4-on-4 four four hockey. 
Puck at the point, playing that across to Hepner. Hepner now working it in down low. Picked up by the Canucks, Kale Price. He'll play that across, and William just plays it into the zone. LaRock now with it. Working off harm's way, 30 seconds remaining here, 4-4 four four hockey. Bergman going right up Broadway, and he'll clear that into the zone. And he'll chase down Einerson. Einerson prevailing with the puck with the help of Price. And we got apparently coming up as Einerson hit the ice. And it's going to be a slash coming to the Twisters. Here's a look at the replay where you can see the call. Well, uh, I remember you saying, Bentley, in all the games during this series, really it seems like the refs are keeping their whistles in their pocket. But that's three straight penalties called. Be a four on three for the Canucks coming up here. And, uh, yeah, I, I think that tensions may be rising in this one even more so uh, from within these players, given the current state of where this game is at with the amount of players going to the box in this period alone. There's going to be a lot of scoring lanes opened up here. 15 seconds, correction there, 14 seconds. A four on three hockey. As walking now in comes to Grave. To Grave continues on. He'll pull that in tight, still jamming at it. And we're back to even strength here for four on four for 54 seconds. As Carls plays it across, there's a shot from the Twisters just wide of the net. On the near side, scooped up by Jacob Carls. Carls plays it right into the center ice, picked up by Weeb. Weeb looking with it. In tight, firing as a shot. and. Getting the most of that is the goalkeeper on that one. Here's the opportunity on a two and one. Hyatt, his quick close angle shot and the Rock has the save on that opportunity. Kyle Van Duns, dangerous play at the line. To, to Grave, to Grave couldn't get a shot away. Canucks trying to clear that one down. 15 seconds remaining until the power play will ensue for the Canucks again. Canucks. Fire that one in wide of the net. Hepner scoops it up. Hepner watched by Price and Matthew Mason Vandell. And the power play now starting for the Canucks. Walking in, quick shot. The Ruck makes the save. And a little tap after some friendly banter as Willian in there with Van Dynes. I think Willian should have expected someone to go after him after that. A little hack on LaRock after the shot was already made and it was covered up. But for this Twisters team, down by three with less than 10 to go, thought they need to get at least one here within the first half of the period. They didn't do that. Going to need to search for a flurry of goals here, but first got to kill off this power play. Canucks controlling on the man advantage. Neil works nicely to Willen. Willen walks in, trying to go back to Kale Price, and Kale Price couldn't get a shot on. That is, that was broken up by Mark Pouette in the slot. Nice play by him. Neil now works it across, getting watched by Xander Carls. Down low, controlling with it. It's Kale Price. Price works around the other way, and that's going to get picked up by the near side at the blue line. Roy Neal plays it across. Back to Neal. Neal looking to Willian. He has four points tonight. Firing, trying to get his fifth. LaRock decides otherwise and holds on for the whistle with just under nine to go. One second remaining on the Brett Bergman slash. And the Twister's doing a great job once again of taking away all the options in the middle. We saw it trying to get that pass to Kale Price. Willen tried to earlier on in the sequence. Uh, they did a nice job taking away a stick, three guys on him, but St. James very content with working it on the outside and still creating chances from that. Wiley quick shot, rebound bouncing up in the air. The Rock gets a stick on it and makes a save. And that will end the power play opportunity as the Twister's ice it. And colliding into Gilbert is a Canuck, and there's some pushing and shoving. It was a Canucks player that lost his edge and took out his own goalkeeper. And just the way it goes sometimes, two players going hard for this puck. The Twisters player may be a bit harder to negate the ice in. You just got to be happy that Gilbert's okay, honestly. That, that looks scary right there. Two players coming at full speed, crashing into him. 
Uh, we'll get an icing though on this play, 841 left. Twisters, if the time is now to get one, it, it is now. Time is truly running out and gotta remember this St. James team, a bit better than the version 2018-19 I'd say. Off the draw, working it on the near side. Jocker, he'll work it, Van Dyne's on the breakaway. And a great stick work by Aiden Bruce and holding on for a whistle is the goalkeeper, Logan Enns, and the plot of the Canucks fans. And we'll see if there's any extracurricular activity to happen. And to go with that again, as a look at this team, this Twisters team here, you know, new coaching staff and like such a young team to come in here and to have such a great season they did. And that then they really had a quick turnaround. Again, the Canucks here being the top team these last couple of years. They have won that 2018 team, as we talked about. They were a little bit of the underdogs, the Doc Horse. As you can put it through the playoffs, they were coming in as the fourth seed. Twisters, quick shot off the draw. There's another one by Carlson. and that one gets blocked. And feeling that one is Jacob Phillips going the other way now. Chase Sobey dishes it across, and that's picked up by Gerson. Here's three for the Twisters going the other way. And DeGrave couldn't keep that on his stick with eight to go. Canucks circling around in their own zone. Still working with it. Neal. He'll work that to Thornton, and Twisters quickly jumping in on him. And that puck comes up and out of play. Bring us a stoppage of play at 7.41. Your shots here in the third period. Five for the St. James Junior Canucks. For the Pemina Valley Twisters, they're matching them evenly at five and no goals to report in the frame here. And I spoke about the little details and how that's what St. James has done so good in this series and really throughout this dynasty they've started uh, earlier on I forget who it was for Pemina Valley, but almost had a chance to get a shot in tight on Gilbert, but Bruce with that clutch stick at the final moment. And that goes right off the post. Speaking of, the puck luck just not there either for Pemina Valley tonight. Yeah, the Twisters not getting those little bounces going their way, but trying to get something going here in the dying minutes, which is when most of the goal scoring has happened in the series, other than the games one and two here, or games correction, one and five here. There's a quick shot by Van Dyne's rebound. Loose Gilbert, way out position. He holds on, and a doggy pile in front a little bit there by some pushing and shoving. And Gilbert still there holding on to the puck. Here's a look there at the scoring opportunity for the Twisters on the replay. And Kyle Van Dyne's letting one rip from the point there that I, I don't think he put it exactly where he wanted it. I think he wanted to go right side or maybe he was trying to create a rebound. But once again, St. James battling and surviving on those chances in front of their net. And Gilbert, he's uh, could be his very well uh, his last game here in a Canucks jersey in the MMJHL, making it a memorable one. Now up to 28 saves on 29 shots against. And there's a look there at his last save. Another beauty and makes a quick save off the draw. Twisters on the wraparound, loose puck. And the skirmish for it continues, trying to get possession. Canucks come out with the puck. Sutherland, though, he'll work it across. Nice sauce pass to Van Dyne's rebound. And another great save. Another couple saves and two great ones in a row for Gilbert. And what has been a great goaltending showdown in this series. As Carlos plays that one in on net. Another save. I was working with the puck, and now comes a penalty as Hyatt had a breakaway taken away from him. McHale's will touch that up, and we could show you the replay of the trip, but instead we'll look here at what has kept them in this game, and the Twisters trying to get back into it, and Gilbert just doing what he needs to do, and that went a brilliant three saves right there in a short period of time. And Gilbert, like I said, he's kept his team in here as they've been going over the playoffs, especially in the first round to give up a fair bit of shots. And that's how it's been for throughout this series, a little bit more even than it was against Transcona for the Canucks. But Gilbert has always been their man. 
and has been able to give them that upper edge with this superior goaltending and that's something that I've been really excited to see throughout this series is both these goaltenders now they react to these high scoring teams and Price working it down low we got a power play going on here for the Twisters a correction for the Canucks as Price takes a little bit of a slash from Dick And Neal now scooping up that puck. Here comes Neal. They're working on the near side. Couldn't find Price. Hepner plays it right back down. And a nice clear by the Twisters. And Neal, he'll work it ahead to William. Here comes William coming into the zone. And that one picked up by Whiteley. Whiteley able to hold the line and no. The other linesman has other ideas about that. Here's a look at the replay. And that was clearly offside. And it's so tough for the Twisters, you know, to help to try and win games here. And especially when they're taking these penalties, as they've definitely stuck, their goaltenders have answered the call of the, fa of the high scoring Canucks, but it's been the speed and the breakaway opportunities for the Canucks have led them as the Canucks have had two, play, uh, two of their game winning goals throughout this series have been on breakaways and you can't really blame the goaltenders all that much on those Twister is able to clear it out of the zone five to go 33 seconds on the man advantage Anderson steps right back in with it Anderson now working around behind the net Canucks power play 25% tonight. Phelps, he'll play it down low. And the Canucks turn that one over. Twisters ice it down. Picked up by Bergman. Bergman now with the puck. Excuse me, trying to center that one. Off the stick of Anderson. Picked up now by Chase Sobe. Sobe leaves it back. Even strength we go. Quick shot in the rock. Makes the paddle save. Well, I know you're not going to show a replay of Gilbert here, but what an outstanding sequence earlier on. Makes four saves in good position, had to come across for some. And yeah, I mean, Brady Whiteley, I really don't know why he was complaining. That was a clear offside, but once again, when this Canucks team is bent, they haven't broken, and that's been so huge. This Twisters team... They've almost made it even in shots compared to where they have been at this game. It's 38 to 32 in favor of St. James, but it's just about the puck luck. The puck bounces. St. James has created great puck luck for themselves where, you know, Pemna Valley is kind of left wondering how some things have gone wrong here tonight. And that's kind of been the story of this one here tonight. And after the timeout called there by the Pemina Valley Twisters, 421 on the clock. It is pretty tough here to mount any sort of comeback when you're in tight like this. And the grave getting ready to go here on the draw against Thorson. He'll beat him. We will watch the empty net. And when or if the Twisters will deem it liable to pull. As so far, Dick trying to work it past Chase Sobey. And now Jonathan Dick gets it away from him. Picked up by Whiteley. His shot through traffic. The Rock holds on for a whistle as the clock hits. 4.02 to go. 4.02 left potentially in the Twisters season here. You need to put on a heavy four check, potentially dump it right at the defense because as good as St. James defensive core is Bentley, We've seen their defense, once they've been pressured, they are prone to turnovers with the puck. So could that be the game plan for Pemina Valley? You gotta find success exiting the zone with success, which, oh, they can't bear bad bounce off the boards again. The Rock, he'll leave it back for Hepner. 3.48 on the clock. Canucks anticipating a playoff or a championship home win as the Rock goes to the bench. Gertzen gloves it down. Picked up by Van Dines. He centers. Twisters play back to the point for Hepner. Hepner plays it across and gets it right back. 3.30 to go. 
to Graves, to Hebner. Hebner is shot through traffic, and that's off the end glass. Not the sound you want to hear for the Twisters now. Picked up by the Canucks, and the Canucks are just all too much for the Twisters as they clear that all the way down. Hebner scoops it up. And then Griffin Hyatt. They'll get rubbed out from the puck, picked up by Weeb, and Weeb gets called on the offside with 3.03 to go. And that's another thing about this is this Twisters team, and that just, they won't have it, just enough energy as the Canucks, their speed is just all too much for them. And this Canucks team, the fastest team in the league, and their speed just showing it here against the Twisters as they're trying to catch up because the Canucks come in offside as Matthew Mason Vandell throwing that in on net, trying to get his second point of the night, his third point of the night correction. We're trying to match yesterday with a goal and two assists. Yeah, and a bit of nerves there, I think, from Mike Hepner. He had a bit of time to play that around better than he did, which almost resulted in turnover early on in the sequence. But you've spoken about it all night, the speed, the counterattack, too, from this St. James Junior Canucks team has been a bit too much for Pemina Valley to handle, and I think it's more evident in tonight's game more than the previous four in this series. Yeah, a lot of people thought the high goal scoring of the Canucks was going to win it for them. But as we've seen in the series, it has been their speed that's been the difference in all these one-goal games. And this Twisters team, again, just so much. Like, you can just see their tiredness in them from the other night. And in front, Matthew Mason Vandell trying to get his third point. That won't go for him. The Rock heads to the box. 2.30 on the clock as The Rock steps into the bench. Or Jocker, his shot, and that's blocked. Picked up by Willian. Willian, he'll score his fifth point of the night. And what a night he's had. Tops it off with two goals and three assists. As it's a 5-1. As the scoreboard now updates, Canucks lead. And the fans now can taste victory. And again, they haven't won a championship here in this building since the 90s. One in St. Patel, beat this Twisters team in five games to one in the Iceplex. And, for correction, yeah. And now here, they finally have a chance to win it here on home ice for the first time since 97-98 season, which was their first title. Hepner now working in tight. Here come the Canucks again. Romnuk walking and firing in the flash of the other ends for LaRock holds on with 104 seconds to go. And for Owen LaRock, if he does stay with this Pemina Valley Twisters team throughout his junior career, what a stud they have. He makes a beautiful save in tight on Van Dines, or on Mason Vandell, but Tyrone Willen puts it into the empty net for his fifth point of the game. Could very well be the playoff MVP, leading scorer in the playoffs. That's set in stone, led the regular season in scoring two, and not sure if you folks caught that, but showing one, two, three, counting with his fingers. Uh, knowing how close the moment is to this team bringing home a third straight championship and winning their first year since 90. And that puck gets cleared out of the zone. Here's a chance for Chase Solby, playing in what will be his final junior career. Picked up by the Knights, or from the Royal Knights, and he's able to end off his career on the high. 64 seconds on the clock, Wade clears it down, and the linesman waves off the icing. As the Canucks fans come alive in this one, puck gets cleared in, and you can hear the crowd in this one. Jocker, he'll clear it in to Bergman. Bergman working with it. Canucks, they play it down low. 
And that puck picked up into the skates of Dick with 30 seconds to go. And all is but academic in this one. Working with it now is the Canucks. Canucks get it out of the zone to Hepner. Hepner across to Russell. And it's just a bunch of veterans now out there for the Twisters playing. And what is their last game as Hepner holds on to the puck and the clock counts down. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. And the Canucks win it. And both teams had a good, hard-fought series, but it's the Canucks will be the MMJHL champions, beating the Twisters 5-1 to one in five games. And it's their third in a row, a great way to cap off their dynasty with this one. And the Twisters, a young team, young coaching staff out there, and... They will definitely be looking to improve next year and continue to build on it. What has been a quick turnaround for Braden Bernards and his crew in this one and only his second year coaching in the league. And again, you know, the championship, he was the guy who started this series off, we won't forget that, scoring the game-winning goal for the Twisters when the Twisters beat the Canucks in 18-19 and now they're being part of his team getting in on the coaching staff and it's good to see how this league continues to grow with players after their careers and as they shift to the bench managers meanwhile the Canucks what has been a great dynasty for them coming out of the pandemic and quickly striking up what has been three series seasons being right at the top and showing dominance throughout the playoffs And, I mean, pretty good for Pemina Valley. Three finals in their last four years as a franchise, really. I mean, these have been the class of the MMJHL, both of these teams. Congratulations to the St. James Junior Canucks, Blair Mooney, his coaching staff, the squad they put together before this championship run happened to now where they've won three in a row is just outstanding work by them. For the Canucks, we've seen the last of Matthew Mason Vandell who had an unreal end to this series, the game winning goal last night. Of course, earning first star. Tyrone Willing capping off his career with a five point night. Two goals, three assists, one of them in the empty net. Noah Gilbert finishes 12-1. and one. He caps off his career. Brady Whiteley, uh, Troy Borthistle, the only ones aging out from this decor. And uh, got to feel great for Chase Sobey as well. Spent all his life, uh, his career in this league with the River East Royal Knights and now gets traded to a championship team. Played such an instrumental role in their penalty kill success and their bottom six role too, but... You talked about it, a young Twisters team who is losing some of their best players, but players like Xander Carrolls gets one more crack at it next year. This goaltending tandem's gonna be back next year, and Logan Enns and Owen LaRock, lots to look forward to, but haven't seen this level of dominance since the Charles Wood Hawks in the 2000s and before that, and uh, St. James only losing one game, and it was a game to start this series where they were nowhere near on the top of their game. They find it, they complete the gentleman's sweep, and what a season it's been, and a great career for most of these players. Kale Price, the captain, also aging out as well. And before we go here, to the trophy presentations. We'll quickly go over tonight's three stars in this one. Starting off, your third star in tonight's game with two assists from the St. James Junior Canucks. Number 25, 
Matthew Mason Vandell, your second star in tonight's game. From the St. James Junior Canucks, he ended off the night with a total of 32 saves, picking up the win for his team. The starting goaltender of the St. James Junior Canucks, number 30, Noah Gilbert. And tonight's first star in this one, he had two goals and three assists. Number two from the St. James Junior Canucks, Tyrone Willian. And it'll be Cole Younger who got the game-winning goal for the Canucks. So Hyatt, Younger, and Price are the guys who have their championship-winning goals. And it's all three different men in their three different championships. Here, and it's their fourth ever championship in franchise history, as we mentioned earlier on. And starting it where they all began with their first one, they get to win it again here on home ice for their first time in over 25 years. And the Twisters, a little bit disappointing end to the season after what well, was a quick run through the playoffs for them, but with, the, like we said, their good goaltending duo that they have and the good depth they have, only losing their top line, only losing their top line there, they should have another good chance at being right back here come next season. And with that, we'll send you to today's ceremonies.
Congratulations to the St. James Junior Canucks on winning their third consecutive championship with the 5-1 final here at home over the Pembina Valley Twisters. I'm your host, Benny Brandt, along with Graham the G-Show, signing off, and we'll see you at, we'll see you back in September for the next MMJ 